Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the Theme Park Evangelist. I'm by myself at the house right now, so I can talk a little louder. I know my last video would probably have been a little more exciting if, you know, I had spoken, you know, just a slight bit louder, you know, or slightly louder, you know what I mean. Anyway, so, as you guys remember, sorry, itchy on the leg. As you guys remember, in my last video, I announced the official um, trip, uh, Central Florida, that is, trip. Uh, dates and details, so just quickly, I'm going to go through it again. Uh, I'm going to be down in Central Florida on, uh, th I should say, th um, Thursday. Oh, my goodness, my laptop's going out again. Okay, there we go. Thursday, February 25th through Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. So I'm really excited about that. Also, just as a reminder, the trip details, I will be staying at... Universal's Endless Summer Resort. I will be doing a vlog on the resort itself. This is, you know, as of right now, this is not a definite, I should uh, mention that right now. As of right now, the uh, plan is to stay at Universal's Endless Summer Resort with TJ, possibly my brother or my good friend Danny, and um, we'll just be uh, doing that. Um, definitely going to show you guys what the uh, resort looks like, also our room. Uh, we're also hoping to do the uh, whole Orlando Informer meetup. If you guys are not familiar with that, it is basically when the uh, newspaper company in Orlando, Florida buys out the um, park or both parks, I should say. And I think it's just Islands of Adventure, but I'm not if I'm not mistaken, but I don't remember. And you basically um, have the whole park to yourself. And it's, like, very, very quiet, very low wait times. Uh, you have all this endless butterbeer all to yourself for free because it's basically already been paid for. You get a lot of free food, and it's all set up on these tables throughout the park. They do have alcohol there. And um, I'm just, like, really excited, though, about the butterbeer and the food myself, but... Yes, they do have a lot to offer, and I'm really excited about the idea of riding Hagrid's ten times in a row. I'm very sure I can do it. If I can't, oh well, you know, um, I'll see how I do after, like, two times. I know I can handle it after one time, so I'll have to see if I can handle it after two times and maybe try to get up to ten times. It would be a cool record to break for myself anyway. I'm excited that I'm ahead at, uh, I'm at 123 subscribers, you know, I've really come a long ways in just four years. It'll be four years this December. As you guys remember, my very first uh, vlog was uh, at Universal during Christmas time, so, you know, I've uh, come a long ways in just a short amount of time. And also, as a uh, friendly reminder, TJ West will be here from Central Florida November the uh, 14th through the 21st of this year, and he will be, uh, uh, that is 2020, and he will be um, uh, just uh, staying in the area. He'll be staying at a Best Western in Florence, Kentucky. I'm not saying which Best Western, I'm just going to say that. So he'll not, he won't be too far from me, but he will be, you know, relatively close I uh, don't have anything officially set in stone for him because this is his trip, so I want him to, of course, make all the uh, plans. I, I do have one thing that I want us to do, and I did get my brother to even confirm that he wants to go. So we are going out to Cleveland, Ohio, November the 14th through the 15th. We are going to stay in the uh, same exact hotel that I did last time with my brother, and... Um, I'm going to take TJ to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for his first time uh, on the 15th. So I'm really excited about that. Um, hopefully my brother will let me do some kind of vlogging during this trip since I didn't really get to last time. I think it would be a really fun opportunity for TJ to be able to see this. And then, of course, um, I want to take him to see the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, all decorated for Christmas since he'll be coming around the holidays. I'm hoping to take him to see Soul at my local movie theater, which is a Cinemark. And it'll have the luxury lounger, so that would be really cool. I would like to take him to go bowling, and definitely would like to take him to Jungle Gym. So, you know, I've got a ton of YouTube videos I have planned. 
the entire time he's going to be here. And that'll basically be my major highlight for the year besides the Central Florida trip that I had back in February of 2020, which is this year, of course. And then, of course, you've got next year, you've got me going down to Central Florida in uh, February. And then, of course, I'm going to go back down for Magic Kingdom's 50th birthday, which is on Thursday, October 1st, 2021, if I'm not mistaken. It might be Friday, but I don't remember. I'm very sure it's Thursday because I know this year is on a Thursday, so who knows. Anyway, guys, anyways, guys, I should say, that's pretty much all my big announcements. So, you're probably wondering, like, what was of all the announcements, you know, just before I was about to do another discussion vlog. So, I just kind of want to recap all over that, especially since, you know, last time I had to speak a little quieter since, you know, there were so many people here and, I, and it was late at night, you know. Right now it's early afternoon on my uh, day off and it's Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day weekend, everyone. You know, really happy that um, it's all day weekend. Tomorrow I get holiday pay. I'm so happy. And I get next Saturday off, or this coming Saturday off, I should say, which is the um, 12th. I'm like, what? You know, this is uh, pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, that does not normally happen. I'm going to definitely enjoy that. You can definitely guarantee there will be some vlogs on Saturday as well. Always in the mood to do some vlogs. Uh, I actually got to mow the lawn today, but I want to do this really quick first. But um, you guys are probably uh, familiar with AJ from uh, Disney Food Blogs. And she does a lot of um, discussion vlogs, like top 10 things you should... You, like uh, one of the recent ones I just saw was top 10 things you should never do while at Walt Disney World, which you can find right there in the top right-hand corner. I don't know if it's, my hand was actually pointing to the right one. But that was one I did watch recently, and I uh, really enjoyed it. So, you know, AJ from Disney Parks blog, she's she seems to be really cool. Um, I have never actually met her personally, but I uh, have been a subscriber to her for quite some time now. And, you know, she put, does post some really interesting content. She loves Walt Disney World. You know, and awesome news is, you guys know, I love Walt Disney World, and that's why I... Actually, I used to uh, go there all the time uh, for the 25 years I did live in Central Florida. And you guys just probably didn't really think about it until I became a YouTuber. Because, of course, that was around the time I started doing it. But, you know, before the whole YouTuber thing, around 2007, I should say, 2007, 2008, that's when I uh, decided to start doing the whole Food and Wine Festival on a regular basis. I was pretty much there every week every other week i never did the whole wine thing of course because i was not old enough but i definitely did the whole food thing so i had i came up with this idea of um only budgeting about twenty dollars every time i went and you know i went around to all the different countries and i kind of figured out pretty quickly what was the uh, best places to go eat at and one of my favorites by far is italy italy has some really good pasta and i love my pasta so you know, every time I went to Epcot and I did the whole Food and Wine Festival, I really uh, just went in and I just kind of did a lot of uh, research and on things. I mean, we're talking back in the day when the uh, Festival Center was in the Wonders of Life Pavilion. We're talking a ways back. So, yeah, there was definitely no um, sign of them closing that down anytime soon. And, of course, back then you could actually go into the Wonders of Life Pavilion wonders of life pavilion and there was an area where they had some girardelli chocolate and i always made sure to go get my sample of girardelli chocolate i'm a huge fan of girardelli chocolate and that was another one of my major reasons for loving this time of the year i have actually gone to food and wine festival on opening day i might have even been there at the same day as the tim tracker which is kind of cool and maybe a few other youtubers and yeah and i never bumped into one of them so you know how that is I'm really praying and hoping that I could bump into some major YouTubers at the 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom. Because I think that would be so awesome. Get some selfies and all that fun stuff. But today's discussion, I would like to discuss something I actually came up with at work uh, in the past week. This is um, top 10 ways or something along those lines to save money while at Walt Disney World. Uh, actually, better yet how to plan the uh, most inexpensive way 
or a most ex- unexpe- inexpensive uh, Walt Disney World trip. Like how to plan a Walt Disney World trip on a budget. I'm sure that AJ has already done this vlog, so here's the official title. Top 10 ways to plan a Walt Disney World vacation on a budget. There we go. Now I've got it. So I'm not going to have any like fancy wording or anything when you're, it's going to go across the thing. You're not going to see like footage of Walt Disney World. I'm not that fancy. I, I mean, some YouTubers um, can do all that, but no, I cannot. So you're just going to have to use your imagination. So I don't remember offhand exactly what I said, but... I'll do my absolute best. If I remember correctly, um, number 10 would be to find the um, best or cheapest uh, airline possible you can find, of course. You're going to want to go on Google, and you're going to want to Google search cheap airline flights. Uh, one of the uh, cheaper ones, of course, is um, trying to remember offhand. It's... One of those airlines where you basically you pay for your seat and then you can buy stuff, you know, as you, um, or when you're on the airplane, it can add up pretty quickly. I wish I remember the name of it. And I know they do the, um, whole, um, like bear club, uh, or whatever, like den or yeah, it's like a bear's den savings or whatever i wish i remembered the um name of the uh airline though i mean i've seen it a few times i mean some of you are probably like what are you talking about and stuff like that and i'm like i know what i'm thinking but i can't remember the name of it and it's so stupid oh yeah frontier frontier is probably one of your cheapest airlines possible that you can find and um i won't do it personally I would rather go Southwest. Southwest is actually pretty good because of the fact that um, you can get your, you know, your two suitcases on for free or up to suit- two suitcases on for free up to 50 pounds. And honestly, that's a lot of money. And if you uh, buy your airline ticket when it's on sale, and you can save some real money. But honestly, though, you can Google search cheap airline flights. You don't have to go through a legit website to save some money so it's always best to google search it so number nine of course would be to try to use some type of website that will help you save some money on um your uh, motel or hotel um i am part of um ufcw 75 which is united food work united food commercial workers 75 and they're based out of michigan so, I could use a website called ticketsatwork.org. Um, there's a few companies that are affiliate or can use the same exact website, and you can honestly save a huge bundle of money. There's a cat right there. He's all lonely, so he's uh, hanging around me right now. Anyway, um, yeah, I love ticketsatwork.org. You can get some like ridiculous savings through there, but that's just one website out of many. There's you know, so many websites where you can basically book hotels and get a really cheap price. Hotels.com, strongly recommend. I've used it many times myself over the years, and they're really good. Um, sometimes you can even find a hotel where you can book it now, pay it later, pay on the date at the hotel itself in their currency, which is, you know, so cool. I'm so itchy today, you know. But yeah, I really like Hotels.com. It has some... Uh, you know, really good uh, deals. I'm trying to get him up here, you know. He's this like, what? what? Should I do it, you know? But, you know, that's just another, you know, idea. Um, another option, which would be part of the same category. If you can't afford to stay, you know, on Disney property, there is always, you know, your standard motel, which I would recommend going to one night, too. And trying to get as close to Disney property as possible. So number eight, speaking of uh, Disney, would be try to stay on Disney property and then go with one of their value reserves. So you might think, like, really, is that a good idea? And honestly, it does save you a lot of money. So 
it eliminates the need to get a, a rental car. Of course, um, not everybody that goes down to Central Florida is just going to Disney. So I'm just talking in the event that you are coming down to Central Florida. You're just going to Walt Disney World, and that's it. So you got the um, Magical Express that will literally pick you up at your um, at the airport at Orlando International Airport, not Tampa as far as I know, but Orlando for sure. And they have employees that will literally stand there holding a sign. They're showing you they're ready. They're here to pick you up. They'll take you to your resort. Excuse me. And you can get all checked in. You can take Disney's complimentary transportation legitimately anywhere on Disney property for free. I mean, obviously, that's why I said it's complimentary. And you don't even have to get a rental car. It's great, you know. I mean... Of course, the cheapest resorts are Pop Century and the All-Star Resorts, which you're looking at about $100 a night. It's around that area. And, you know, for the... Uh, depends on how long you want to stay. I mean, even for a five-night uh, stay, even after taxes, you're looking at almost $600. But that's not terrible. I mean, you could be staying at the uh, Polynesian, specifically the bungalows, and you could be looking at a few grand, and I mean, honestly, five hundred compared to a few grand is a lot better. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. I mean, I'm just you know guessing that art of well, not art of animation, but at least Pop Century and the All Star Resorts are at least a hundred, but they could be a little bit more. You could be looking at a little less than a thousand, but still, for five nights, that's better. I mean. Come on, the Polynesian is expensive, and the Grand Floridian is even worse. I mean, you're looking at some of the really nice resorts. And then, of course, with those two value resorts, your best transportation... I know Pop Century at least is connected to Disney Skyliner. I know that for a fact. Now, the All-Star Resorts are not. And, um, yeah, you would be best taking the uh, bus at that point. <clears throat> And, like, the bus is literally going to be your best friend while staying on Disney property. But anyway, um, so number seven would also be um, utilizing the uh, complimentary Disney transportation as much as possible. I know I kind of hinted on that in number eight, but number seven I definitely would strongly recommend using that Disney complimentary transportation as much as you possibly can. Um, uh, honestly, it's going to save you so much money, especially if you like, you did happen to have a car and <clears throat> you didn't feel like paying that $25 out for general parking or whatever it is these days. It could be, uh, about 30 these days right now. I don't know. So as far as I know, it's about 25 for general parking. It's obviously twice that for preferred. And the difference between general and preferred is, General, you could be put anywhere versus preferred. You're right up front at every single park. And that Magic Kingdom right now, I would go with the preferred just because they're building a uh, shelter for the um, trams. Just like they are for Epcot. And Magic Kingdom, the parking lot's a disaster as soon as you get near the uh, front of the tram. So honestly, General kind of sucks right now just because... You're not even taking the tram that far, and then you have to walk the rest of the way. Oh, it's such a hassle. So, sometimes you're going to want to get that preferred. And, of course, this is also where the buses come in handy. And I honestly do truly mean this. Because you can honestly park your car at Disney Springs where it's always free parking unless they change it in the near future. And um, you can take a bus over from Disney Springs over to Magic Kingdom. Now, granted, you're looking at wasting about 30 minutes right there alone. At least 30 minutes. And by the time you know you get to the Magic Kingdom, you're, um, the bus pretty much bypasses all the transportation ticket center altogether. You go straight to the Magic Kingdom, and then you have your own personal security. So by the time everything's said and done, you're right in front of the entrance, which is awesome. So I really like that. And then, of course, um, you know, you've got the uh, other parks and 
you know, some of those like Hollywood Studios and Epcot have the Disney Skyliner to your advantage. So you don't always have to use the um, bus. And then, of course, Epcot and Hollywood Studios also have the boat. But I heard they're starting to run it less because of the Disney Skyliner. So that's where the Disney Skyliner honestly comes in handy. And I've actually ridden on it myself, as you guys probably remember back in February. So, yes, I would definitely say the Disney Skyliner is faster and is also more private. I prefer the Disney Skyliner. It's also more comfortable. Uh, number six for me personally, try to avoid eating at the uh, Disney parks as much as possible. Um, obviously, if you want to eat at the Disney parks, you're going to want to try to do quick service as much as you can. But we'll talk about that more next. So, and this is where a car does come in handy. If you do feel like driving, that is. And honestly, I would strongly recommend driving. And don't worry, I'm going to mention more stuff as we go on to really make that Disney World vacation as cheap as possible. But there is a lot of cheap restaurants in... Um, uh, Central Florida, especially on 192, you're looking at Golden Corral, you're looking at CeCe's, obviously, you know, during this pandemic, and you're probably like, mm, I don't know if I really want to, but uh, honestly, a lot of these places are, like, ridiculously cheap. You've even got Denny's, and Denny's is also ridiculously cheap, especially for kids on Tuesdays when they're free, all the way up to age 12, so, you know, you've got your options, and, you know, the whole fact that, um, there's so many of them there, so close to Walt Disney World. So you can pretty much leave Walt Disney World and you can drive about five, ten minutes, go find a restaurant, go get your family and yourself something to eat. You're looking at spending a little over $20 if you do add on the drinks, which most people do, or you could be really cheap and get some water. But honestly, soft drinks at some of the outside properties are not that expensive. Like Golden Corral, you're looking at $25 probably altogether for four people with the drinks. And then it's a little less than, it's probably about 20 without the drinks. So that's honestly not that bad compared to eating on Disney property and spending about $20 just on two people. And that's with the drinks. And that's, you know, a crazy amount of money. And I'm just saying about $20, it might be more than that, it might be closer to 23 but still, you get the general idea. It's not expensive, sorry, it's not cheap to eat at Walt Disney World. I remember one time I took um, my friend Artem Den, or uh, YouTuber Artem D, and he was like, you know, to... Does McDonald's or does Walt Disney World have like a McDonald's or something? Yeah, of course, Walt well, Disney World is a McDonald's, but they charge like I'm on a leg for it, so. Yeah, it's not worth it. No, that was another question he had for me. I was, I was about to say, um, does Disney have like a dollar menu? Heck no. <laughs> That's another one of my favorite things I've ever been asked. It's like, this is Walt Disney World you're talking about. You know, they're like way up there. They make billions upon billions of dollars. Of course, they're not going to have a dollar menu. Like, forget it. You're going to really want to be very careful about where you spend your money and how much you spend. So number five would be try to avoid eating at the sit-down restaurants, eat at the quick service restaurants as much as possible. Try to at least have one day where you eat at the sit-down restaurants and try to keep it to at least one restaurant. And then on top of that, make sure you do a lot of research on which restaurant you're going to be eating at. Something like Ohana would be so worth it. Try to go with a place where you're paying for the meal and the unlimited drinks. Like um, Boma at Animal Kingdom Lodge does all that. And honestly, it's so worth it. Even uh, the Crystal Palace of the Magic Kingdom in Main Street, USA does all that op options. I mean... For four people, I mean, back in February, I paid about $250 after the gratuity was added on and everything. But that was you know, feeding four people endless amount of food, endless amount of drinks. Even chocolate milk was included on that. And that was also included in the gratuity. I mean, for a Disney World character buffet dining experience, I thought that was actually a pretty good meal. 
and deal on top of that. Obviously, I can't afford to eat like that all the time. That's something I do like on the very rare occasion. I definitely would like to eat at Ohana again the next time I go. So that's just uh, something I definitely have in my mind right now about um, what I would like to do as far as like a Disney sit-down dining experience. But honestly, you're better off eating at the quick service restaurants if you you know, have to eat at the Disney um, parks or the resorts. Go with quick service. What is a quick service um, restaurant at Walt Disney World? It's basically Disney's fancy word for a fast food restaurant. And not only is it fancy word, it's also their fancy version of it. Because Walt Disney World not only um, themes it fancy, but they have fancier food. Um, I used to work at a restaurant called Men and Bill's Dockside Diner. I talked about it in my Life as a Cast Member or what, Life as a Working Cast Member series which I will put the uh, link to that playlist up there. Anyway, so we sold hot dogs of all sorts. Uh, as I worked there, I discovered they had more choices. So we've had chili cheese. We've just had chili. We've had coleslaw. We've had pulled pork and coleslaw. We've had just regular cheese hot dogs and just plain hot dogs. And that was just, you know, some of the many choices we had at Men and Bell's Dock Cider Diner, and that was just food alone. And that uh, restaurant itself was very well known for its alcohol. I can't, you can't even get me started on that, but you know how that is. Because there are so many options. But, you know, just looking at that alone, like, honestly, that's not bad. And that was a foot long on top of that. And I've been to Casey's Corner at Main Street, at Magic Kingdom at Main Street, USA, and they have foot longs too. I actually scored a free meal there because uh, a former friend of mine decided to uh, throw a pity party because a uh, cast member was slightly rude to her haunted mansion. But, you know, sometimes, you know, those cast members have bad days. And I guess she was just like, you know, what was me? What was me? Stuff like that. And, but, you know, in the long run, hey, I got that free meal and I got uh, VIP access to the Boo to You parade. So, yeah, I'm not complaining. And that was about a few years ago. So, yeah, I do miss... Uh, Casey's Corner a little bit, but honestly, my heart goes to uh, Men and Bell's Dockside Diner, or Dockside Diner as it's called now, as I worked there for about five months, and I really enjoyed the food there, and I did actually eat their food a few times while I was there, but anyway, yeah, quick service, um, definitely a lot fancier, and I wouldn't say better for you, but definitely more worth the price than, like, going to McDonald's or something. Just putting that out there. Uh, as far as the beverages go, honestly, I would rather go with an ice water than getting a Coke. You are better off getting your soda or pop at, like, a um, sit-down restaurant where you know it's going to be unlimited refills than you are going to a quick service restaurant and ordering a soda. Why? Because most quick service restaurants at Walt Disney World do not offer unlimited refills. I know one for sure that does, and that's Backlot Express, unless they discontinue it in the near future. Electric Umbrella used to, but that restaurant does not exist anymore, so yeah, that's unfortunate. Number four, uh, for me personally, if you are staying you know, on Disney property, or if you do travel to Walt Disney World and you need somewhere to stay, um, you are best packing as much breakfast food as possible. Try to avoid eating out as much as you can unless you absolutely have to. I mean, if you are flying, then like I would just have a separate bag that you would just throw all your food in. I mean, breakfast food, you're best buying foods like uh, Pop-Tarts, and Nutri-Grain bars, bananas, if they you can, if you can make it last. Um, you can even try to rent a car and get all that stuff if you can't afford it. Uh, there is a lot of online grocery delivery services and just online services. You can get all that stuff delivered. Or you can even get an Uber or a Lyft and go to the grocery store and then take the Uber or Lyft back to your hotel or resort. And... Um, that way you don't have the uh, issue of renting a car or anything. 
like in the law of ways, I would strongly recommend you doing a grocery shopping trip the moment that you um get to Central Florida because the fact that you know eating out for breakfast every single day is gonna add up so quickly is uh just you know not good at it all at all so um yeah, I would definitely recommend getting <clears throat> a lot of uh breakfast food non perishable of course. Loading it up into <clears throat> your room and just kind of slowly but surely eating it over uh, various days. That's why driving is better because of the fact that you can just pack whatever you want and just take it with you. Uh, I have some friends from Milton, Ontario that do this all the time. They drive and they bring a lot of breakfast food with them. So that's always a good thing. Uh, number three would, um, or for me, would probably be the Disney dining plan. I don't know if I would put that on number one at all. Pro I mean, I could, but honestly, um, I think it's a good spot for it. So what is the Disney dining plan? The Disney dining plan is um, a package deal that you can get when um, you go on like DisneyWorld.go or DisneyWorld.Disney.go.com something along those lines or you can go on the uh, my disney experience and uh, you basically purchase the amount of snack and dining credits that you want i believe the amount of money that you have to put down is about a thousand dollars but honestly when it's all said and done it's basically like prepaying for your meal and you can just or your meals for the week and you can do this like almost at any time and then when you get there, you're just going to basically use all this stuff up slowly but surely over the week. You can pretty much use the Disney dining plan ever or anywhere. Um, obviously, you know, you're going to want to look at your map and see where or what accepts the Disney dining plan. You can also ask, oh, can I use my Disney dining plan whenever you want to get something? Most of the time they're going to say, oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. And then when you... um use that you're just basically going to use some of your credits whenever you get your receipt i'll show you how many credits you have left on your account and i don't remember offhand how um i was able to get into people's disney dining plans and use up some of their credits i think they had to like use their uh, magic band or their debit card or whatever most of the time it was their magic band because you would have it uh hooked up to your uh magic band and it would just slowly but surely eat away at your account so that was kind of cool you definitely want to have that all set up in advance of course before you go down to walt disney world and um yeah i mean honestly if you do this then imagine all that money you just spent well you can probably just gain it all back and then you can spend your money elsewhere on like merchandise or whatnot uh, for me, number two would probably be trying to spend as little money as possible on merchandise. I mean, obviously, you're going to want to go with or buying merchandise at Disney versus one of those cheap, fake places on uh, Walt Disney World property. Well, not Walt Disney World property, but like on 192. Honestly, though, it's like a really bad idea to go down to 192 and you're going to see like a lot of gift shops set up everywhere and they're going to uh, claim that they are selling the official Walt Disney World merchandise or t-shirts it's a lie they don't a lot of these you know places they sell it like really cheap most of the time what they do is they make something that looks like the a legit thing and it's cheaply made and that's why it rips apart so easily or made so easily and i don't know how they legally get away with it and yet they do even the golden crawl right there on 192 over by um sherberth road uh it exits practically into a gift shop and you're going to find all kinds of disney crap in there um there's a cc's right next door to it on the other side and uh, right next door is a gift shop to the CCs. You have to um, go around the waterfall. And, or I mean, if 
you're heading towards the CCs. You have to go past the gift shop to get there. It's like right next to the waterfall, and that's the best way to put it. Because it's in the same exact location as that miniature golf course. It's right there. So if you know what I'm talking about, then you'll know what I'm saying. So, yeah, that's another place where you can find some cheap-made stuff. Old Town, of course, they've got some gift shops over there, and they've got you know cheap Disney merchandise over there as well. As I said, though, you would be best buying it at Walt Disney World. And if you know someone that works for Walt Disney World, have them take you to property control. That's basically the official Disney cast member uh, store. And that's where all the um, stuff that gets pulled off the shelf goes. And everything is majorly discounted over there. So try to find that cast member friend that you're like really close to you obviously don't want to walk up to a cast member and say i'll be your friend and use that as an excuse to go to property controlled no you want to be official or legit officially friends with a cast member or you want to be at least be related to them and i don't mean lie to a cast member that i'm related to you i mean you have to be related to them flesh and blood that kind of way so those are the two ways you can um, get into property control. Otherwise, I wouldn't just, you know, just walk right into property control. I mean, obviously, you have to have a cast member with you that has their blue ID to get you in anyway. And there's so much cool stuff in there. I've taken a few people in there myself, but that was back when I worked there. And then, of course, number one is going to be a few things I'm just going to throw on all at once. Um, whenever you buy a... Um, a parking for a day it's going to be good for all four parks so if you do end up being forced to park i would definitely um just go ahead and make it um you know a day out of it i would get to walt disney world as early as possible that way that parking pass is um you know made useful for the entire day so that's definitely one um another one is make good use out of the my disney experience Book those reservations in advance. Uh, make sure you, if you cancel any reservations, cancel it within 24 hours. Disney does give you a 24-hour grace period to cancel your reservations for dining because of the fact that um, they understand that people have stuff that comes up at the last minute. So, And that's all complimentary, of course. You can uh, book pretty much any reservation the debit card is only there to play or put a hold on it to make sure that you're going to actually show up and of course if you cancel it ahead of time no problem they're not going to charge you unless you cancel within 24 hours i think i've done no call no shows and i did not get charged which is unusual but you know how that is and then of course you're definitely going to want to use your uh, fast passes for sure uh your well i mean is you're going to definitely want to book them they're completely free. You're going to want to get your uh, three, and then you're going to want to keep doing plus one as much as possible until you basically can't get anything else. And, of course, uh, this is all reserved for free, and you can do it, like, up to 90 days ahead of time, which is great. So you can go on My Disney Experience. You can link your ticket to the My Disney Experience, and then you can choose what fast passes you want for that ticket. Make sure that you got everybody's tickets uh, squared away so you can make sure everybody gets to ride whatever rides they want. And this eliminates staying in line, especially social distancing right now. There really is not going to be a lot of line waiting anyway. And honestly, when I'm hearing about all these long, long, long line waiting, I know for a fact that the line is only longer because of the fact that everybody's six feet apart from each other. And that makes the line even longer. I mean, if you crammed everybody in, which we don't want to do right now, the line would be uh, twice as short. So, yeah. You want to get definitely get a hold of those fast passes for sure. I feel like that's something else, or something, there's something else. But honestly, that's the majority of it right there. Um, that's pretty much... All 10 reasons alone right there why you, um, or how I should say you can save your money, uh, or just, or I shouldn't say, well, save your money, but how to plan that Walt Disney World vacation as cheap as possible. 
I mean, if you need to go back and rewatch it to see what I'm talking about, I mean, I just spend a good amount of time on each one, so that way I was not going uh, on too fast. Of course, the just for um, a f- reminder, I should say, or just as a reminder, the first ten to fifteen minutes was just me letting you guys know uh, the um, like announcements. I had stuff like that for uh, the rest of this year as well as what I had planned for at least next year. And then also, or I should say that also. And then by like the 15 minute marker or so, that's when I started doing my whole uh, how to um, plan that perfect Walt Disney World vacation on a budget, stuff like that. And that's a good 25 minutes of material right there alone. And now I'm just kind of doing my conclusion right now. Anyways, guys, I really enjoyed this. Let me get this uploaded to YouTube and get this uh, long mode because it's not going to mow itself. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. And always remember, you can do all things through Christ strengthens you. Have a great day. Peace out. And happy day Labor Day. Happy Labor Day weekend.